Ruth, one of the exercises that we've used over the years with people with panic disorder and with anxiety and racing mind is small breath holds. So it's also called breathing recovery sitting. And I'll go through it with you, it's, it's pretty easy. Now, if anybody at home is susceptible to panic disorder, go very gentle with the length of your breath hold time. And only you will know where, where it's at in terms of, we want you to experience the kind of slightest air hunger, but not too much that it's going to initiate any stress response. So I'm gonna start you off very easy and um, then we will gently build it up. And I will always say to students, only increase it when you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable with it, stay where you're at. So let's start. So this would be say somebody is feeling stressed and, or for example, their breathing is becoming labored, their breathing is becoming harder and faster. This is a technique to help bring it down. So whenever you're ready, take a number of breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold. Three, two, one, let go, breathe. Just breathe as normal. Forget about your breathing for a while. So you're just breathing as normal. So normally you breathe as normal for maybe three, four, could be five breaths. And then again, normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch and hold, three, two, one, let go. And now just breathe as normal for a few breaths. And again, normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch and hold, three, two, one, let go, breathe in through your nose and you're just breathing as normal. And one of the good things about this exercise, you don't have to pay attention to your breathing to practice it. So sometimes with people with anxiety and panic disorder, they can get a little anxious by focusing on their breathing. So with this exercise, you don't have to focus on your breathing. You just take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch and hold. Three, two, one, let go. Breathe in through your nose. And now you're just breathing your usual breathing pattern. And then again, whenever you're ready, normal breath in through your nose. I'll just have you do it just a little bit more normal. So normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose and pinch and hold, that's it. Three, two, one, let go and breathe in through your nose. And then you're just breathing normally for a few breaths. And again, take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch and hold. Three, two, one, let go and breathe through your nose. So that's breathing recovery at about three seconds or so. Another exercise that can be useful if somebody is having a panic attack, and this would be based on the brown paper bag that used to, to be used if somebody was going into a state of hyperventilation, they were often encouraged to breathe in and out of a brown paper bag. The purpose of the brown paper bag was to pool carbon dioxide. So the individual is hyperventilating, meaning that they're breathing a little bit too fast and or too hard. So their breathing is too much. The volume of air that they are breathing in and out of their lungs is too much. And this is causing a lowering of the gas carbon dioxide from the blood. This in turn then is causing reduced blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain. It's also increasing blood pH and this arouses the central nervous system, which is effectively the brain. So if we breathe hard and fast, it causes arousal, it causes agitation. So the brown paper bag was to breathe into the bag to pull carbon dioxide and rebreathe that carbon dioxide back into the lungs to increase carbon dioxide in the blood, to increase blood flow to the brain and oxygen delivery, to normalize blood pH, to help bring the calmness to the central nervous system. So the exercise goes as follows. You can, when, whenever one is feeling symptoms of panic disorder, they can just simply cup their hands like this. And you can be breathing in for three seconds and out for three seconds. So you're breathing in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three. And you don't have to change your breathing, you're just kind of going with it. So you're breathing again, it's breathing in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three. So that exercise again is quite useful. Now, when one is cupping hands, it's actually safer than using a brown paper bag because oxygen is able to get in through the fingers. Whereas if you're just using a bag, yes, you are pooling carbon dioxide, but there's no oxygen getting in. So that's why a bag isn't considered safe, but cupping your hands like this would be. 
you're pooling carbon dioxide and the whole objective is as well slow down the respiratory rate because if during hyperventilation or a panic attack our breathing very often gets faster harder upper chest and this is very inefficient way so it reduces gas exchange so oxygen isn't getting as effectively if you breathe harder and faster it's contributing to that stress that fight or flight response so that's why I had you breathe in for three seconds and out for three seconds which is slowing down the respiratory rate to about 10 breaths per minute which is often feasible even when you're feeling air hunger and it can be a little bit of course uncomfortable you're cupping your hands so you're feeling the air hunger can be a little bit stronger because of the pooling of carbon dioxide but just bear in mind it's this air hunger which signifies the carbon dioxide is increased in the blood which in turn is going to help improve blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain and to calm down the brain. The third exercise that we would use with when somebody is having anxiety or hyperventilation if for example a hyperventilation attack kicks in our breathing gets faster upper chest and often through the mouth sensation of suffocation so in order to alleviate the feeling of suffocation we continue breathing faster in upper chest but it's the worst way to breathe to alleviate the feeling of suffocation a much better gas exchange takes place when we breathe no slow and low this is worth practicing when you're not having an attack this is worth practicing when an individual predisposed to anxiety or panic disorder when they're not having symptoms and then when they are having symptoms they can automatically revert to nose slow and low so i would like you to have your hands two hands either side of your lower two ribs root and as you're breathing in that your ribs are just gently moving out and as you're breathing out your ribs are gently moving in so you're allowing the shoulders to relax and directing your attention to the area of the ribs and i'm going to have you breathe in for three seconds and to breathe out for three seconds so you're breathing in two three out two three 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 and now just relax so the three techniques again if we're having symptoms of panic disorder anxiety hyperventilation the first is small breath holds this is the breathing recovery that's breathing in and out and pinching the nose and holding for about three seconds and then letting go and breathing for normal for about maybe four or five breaths and then repeating it the second technique is when we're having symptoms is to think about cupping the hands and to think about the brown paper bag traditionally that we want to pull carbon dioxide inside the hands and rebreathe that carbon dioxide back into the lungs to increase it in the blood to increase blood flow to the brain to increase oxygen delivery to normalize blood ph to calm the central nervous system the third exercise that we were using then is instead of breathing fast and shallow which is very common when we feel suffocated we naturally revert to breathing faster harder and shallow it's very inefficient and it reduces gas exchange it's much better if we can think of breathing nose slow and low so that's why you had your hands either side of your lower ribs and as you breathe in your ribs gently move out and as you breathe out your ribs are gently moving in so those are the three techniques that we use when we're having symptoms panic disorder anxiety or hyperventilation